Most people imagine California's infamous San Andreas Fault or the devastating quakes that rocked Japan and Chile when they think of earthquakes. But hidden deep within America's heartland lies a far more unnerving threat that has quietly haunted the nation for centuries. The New Madrid Seismic Zone, spanning Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Illinois, is a sleeping giant with a violent past. Though today's residents enjoy quiet farmland and slow-paced towns, history tells a story of terror. In 1811 and 1812, this region unleashed a barrage of earthquakes so powerful they rattled cities hundreds of miles away and even reportedly made the Mississippi River fast forward to today, and scientists warn that the fault remains active. Despite its silence, the New Madrid seismic zone may be biding its time until the next disaster. This video will explore the true threat that looms beneath the Midwest and reveal why the doomsday earthquake scenario is more than just folklore. Origins of the New Madrid Seismic Zone The New Madrid Seismic Zone is no stranger to activity, though it hides in plain sight. Unlike more famous fault lines located near the edges of tectonic plates, New Madrid sits deep within the interior of the North American plate. Its ancient fault structures date back to the Cambrian period, a staggering 500 million years ago. However, significant activity began only in the last 100,000 years. What caused this relatively recent awakening is still debated among experts. Unlike California's San Andreas Fault, which is driven by the constant motion of the Pacific and North American plates, New Madrid's behavior is shaped by subtler, less obvious forces. Two main theories offer insight into why this quiet region shakes. One is glacier pressure release. During the ice ages, vast glaciers weighed down the land, compressing it. When the glaciers melted, the land began to slowly rebound, shifting the stress in the crust and reactivating ancient faults. Another explanation involves far-field tectonic stresses that radiate across the continent from more active regions. These pressures can build over centuries, eventually reaching a breaking point and triggering earthquakes. Scientists now believe both processes likely contribute to the seismic potential in the Midwest. While much of the fault's past is buried beneath layers of soil, geological studies have uncovered evidence of ancient quakes through liquefaction features. Sand volcanoes and disrupted sediment layers mark where the ground turned to liquid and erupted violently during past tremors. These clues suggest that while catastrophic earthquakes here are rare, they do happen, and they have been happening for millennia. The legacy of the New Madrid Seismic Zone is rooted not only in the distant past, but also in relatively recent American history. The 1811 to 1812 earthquake sequence left no doubt that the zone is capable of producing violent upheaval, and that reality continues to worry geologists and emergency planners alike. The Legendary Earthquakes of 1811 to 1812 In the dead of winter between December 1811 and February 1812, the earth roared beneath the Midwest. A series of three massive earthquakes, estimated at magnitudes between 7 and 7.5, shook the New Madrid seismic zone and left a legacy that remains legendary. Unlike anything settlers had seen before, these quakes were felt as far as the East Coast, where church bells reportedly rang in Boston. Frontier towns closer to the epicenter faced devastation that was almost unimaginable for the time. The Mississippi River, the region's lifeline, appeared to defy nature. According to tales passed down through generations, the river flowed backward for several hours, creating temporary waterfalls and flooding low-lying areas. While modern scientists suggest this was a result of land shifting and water sloshing violently, the visual of a reversed river captured the event's surreal terror. Meanwhile, massive landslides reshaped the landscape and thousands of acres of forest were level. Yet, due to the sparse population at the time, very few deaths were recorded. In St. Louis and beyond, the ground did not stop shaking for months. Aftershocks rattled the region daily. Some accounts described fissures opening in the ground, swallowing entire trees and creating new lakes and swamps that exist to this day. The historic towns of New Madrid and nearby settlements faced ruin, with buildings destroyed and livelihoods upended. These legendary quakes became part of the Midwest's folklore, but they were not mere stories. 
Geological evidence confirms the magnitude of the devastation. Sand blows and liquefaction deposits from this period have been discovered and studied extensively, verifying that this was one of the most significant seismic events in North American history. Yet the question remains, could it happen again? Modern Concerns and Silent Warnings since the 1812 quake sequence, the New Madrid seismic zone has remained relatively quiet. Small earthquakes are still recorded regularly, but nothing on the scale of those early 19th century disasters has occurred. However, this silence does not comfort experts. In fact, it raises alarms. In seismology, a lack of movement does not necessarily indicate stability. In many cases, it can suggest that stress is quietly accumulating. A quiet fault can be like a tightly wound spring. Without minor tremors to release tension, pressure builds over decades or centuries until it eventually breaks loose in a violent event. In 2025, minor quakes continue to ripple through the region. A 3.0 magnitude quake in December 2024 was barely noticed. Yet experts caution against ignoring such reminders. Even the recent 2.7 and 2.8 magnitude tremors in early 2025 were early morning events that escaped widespread attention but served as warnings. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, there is a 25 to 40 percent chance of a magnitude 6.0 or higher earthquake in the NMS seed within the next 50 years. While this figure may seem small, the potential consequences are not. A quake of that magnitude in the Midwest could prove devastating due to the way seismic waves travel through the denser, more stable rocks of the central United States. Unlike in California, where waves dissipate quickly, Midwest quakes can be felt over a much broader area. Buildings and infrastructure also pose serious concerns. Most Midwest structures were not designed with earthquakes in mind. Tornadoes, floods, and blizzards shaped building codes here, not seismic activity. Thus, a magnitude 6 or higher quake could damage or collapse countless homes, businesses, and bridges, turning a natural event into a humanitarian crisis overnight. What a future doomsday quake could bring. While experts agree that a magnitude 8 or greater earthquake is unlikely in the new Madrid seismic zone, the effects of a lower magnitude disaster could still be catastrophic. A simulation of a magnitude 7.7 .7 quake offers a chilling look into what may unfold if the fault once again ruptures with fury. The devastation would begin near New Madrid, where buildings would crumble and ground rupture would tear through farms and roads in seconds. Cities in Arkansas, Missouri, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Illinois would be devastated in short order. Memphis and Jonesboro would face widespread destruction as structures not built for seismic resilience collapse. The shaking would spread rapidly to metropolitan hubs like St. Louis, where even reinforced buildings could suffer significant damage. Rescue efforts would be hampered by broken roads and collapsed bridges, isolating communities and delaying critical aid. The cascading effects would not stop there. Power grids stretched across multiple states would be crippled. A projected 2.6 million households could lose electricity for days or weeks. Meanwhile, the Mississippi River's course and behavior would be altered once more, threatening levees and causing massive floods that could displace thousands of residents living along its banks. Economic impacts would also be staggering. The Missouri Department of Natural Resources estimates a major quake could cause damages exceeding $296 billion. In addition to residential and commercial losses, critical infrastructure such as highways, airports, and pipelines would be paralyzed. The ripple effect on national logistics and commerce could be felt coast to coast as supply chains break down. Why predicting the next big one is so hard? Despite significant advances in the fields of geology and seismology, predicting earthquakes remains one of science's greatest challenges. Unlike natural disasters such as hurricanes or floods, earthquakes offer no clear warning signs. They can strike suddenly and without notice, often giving people only a few seconds to react. The New Madrid Seismic Zone exemplifies these challenges. As an intraplate seismic zone, it lies within a tectonic plate rather than along its boundaries, making its behavior far more complex and difficult to model and understand. 
Scientists like Dr. Elizabeth Sherrill emphasize that while we can study past seismic events and assess current stress levels in the Earth's crust, it is impossible to accurately forecast when a fault will rupture. The underlying causes of the quakes in the New Madrid seismic zone are still a topic of ongoing debate among researchers. Theories such as glacier pressure release and far field stress help explain the seismic activity in this area, but quantifying these factors remains a significant challenge. The exact amount of stress that is stored deep underground is still largely unknown. Compounding the situation is the fact that the New Madrid seismic zone does release energy periodically through minor earthquakes. While these small tremors may help relieve some pressure, they can also suggest that the fault is still active and accumulating stress over time. Each year that passes without a major quake can lead to increased uncertainty rather than alleviating fears, as this prolonged calm might indicate a buildup of tension within the fault lines. In her discussions, Dr. Sherrill also underscores the importance of preparation in the face of these uncertainties. Although the doomsday scenario often attracts media attention and dominates headlines, she reminds us that knowledge and proactive planning are crucial components in reducing risk. Investment in scientific research and infrastructure retrofitting could play significant roles in mitigating the potential impacts of future disasters. As Dr. Sherrill aptly puts it, the more we know, the better we can prepare. She advocates that awareness should not incite panic. Rather, it should be viewed as a critical step in promoting public safety and ensuring communities are better equipped to handle seismic events when they occur. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think the Midwest is truly ready for the possibility of a devastating earthquake, or has this silent threat been overlooked for far too long? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.